All right, so I'm going to skip most of these slides. You can skip that one. I'll skip that one. Uh, that's the better, that's the more up-to-date version of the uh, chart that, uh, that uh, you just said uh, earlier from Chang. And um, I just gave up in January of 2016. There were over 350 <laughs> Apache software packages and 21 layers. I, I think the, the it just says there's a lot of software and it's very, it's very highly functional. And our basic strategy is to try to bring HPC to this software. And uh, we have two basic uh, large projects. One led by Judy is the Harp project, which is currently implemented in Hadoop, but we will, we will also make it available in the other system I described called Twisted Tooth. And that is a plugin to Hadoop, which gives Hadoop uh, scientific interfaces to do scientific paper analysis and a richer of very not only the power of HPC uh, communication but also a very rich set of communication collectives and those co those uh, collectives are shown here and uh, I'm sure they all ought to be an MPI4 and if they're not they better be an MPI4. Send me that slide I'll make sure. <laughs> I have some other things you to add as well. Okay. <laughs> There is so that's one thing to add. And it, these basically merge the capabilities of MapReduce and classic MPI. And here's an example of the types of new um, algorithms that HARP implements in trying to get load balancing for hard problems <coughs> related to Richelieu allocation, which are very loaded balanced. You need to actually sort of do a statistical um, approach where you, you time the operation of the node and just, because of load impacts, you just stop all the operations at a certain time. That means you sample the calculation for the time you have. And that gives you good answers and it much improves the load balancing. So that's built into the hub. All right. And what we have here, originally we were motivated by the hoop, but everybody knows the moot is awful. Uh, this, um, here represents the sum uh, of the 20 uh, routines which have been implemented by Judy and Harp. I should note that most of these run on that Intel DAAL system, and I'm sure they can run in um, Par AI as well, that we suitably talk to IBM. Um, but the idea is that uh, we assume that DAL and then add the capabilities to do distrib uh, shared distributed memory uh, parallel computing. Um, and uh, the next, uh, so that's the first part of the talk, the next two and a half minutes will be on Twister 2. Uh, Twister was the original system we built in 2010. And what we did was we looked at all these systems. And you notice, I noticed we had 350 Apache systems. And there were almost all, lots of them are identical. The endless systems doing the same thing because the criterion to have an Apache software system is not that you add something new, it's that you have a good community. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and <coughs> I also note that they're built by different communities. The database community builds something different <coughs> from the distributed, uh, distributed system community, and which is different from the HPC community, and so on. And we propose to solve this by taking the best, best ideas from all these systems and implement them as a toolkit, which you can then package together in different ways. Because Spark and Hadoop and, and Giraffe and things, they all give you a certain choice of technology for various key components. And um, these key components are listed here. You have to do batch and streaming. You have to do a very, one I'll spend a little one more slide on. Spark and think and things always do data flow communication, whereas MPI always does bug synchronous processing or equivalent, and you need both. So we have certainly have implemented, and, and the other interesting thing for MPI, there is no data flow communication library, whereas MPI actually has to write algorithms which should be put into a data flow library. Um, and um, all right, so this is a little more detail in the communication. So this shows you a very simple representation of one of the big differences between data flow and classic MPI. In classic MPI, you have your processes which run forever and they exchange information. And 
Whereas in data flow, you have one set of processes and a target set of processes, and the communication goes between them. All pictures of a dupe shade of that. So, um, as far as I can see, that there's no reason not to use. It's not. It's definitely. It's, I mean, we have implemented the data flow library. Our intention is just to use MPI as the bug synchronous processing. Um, it, so it also does things like handling messages which are bigger than the variable memory, things which are built into the Apache systems but not into MPI. So it's just um, got some different, um, different optimizations, dynamic data size and so on. All right, so here's uh, the standard pictures which show that we always get better performance than, than um, existing systems on using data flow in Twister versus data flow in Spark. Sometimes we also look at MPI in, in, in this as well. Um, so this actually compares Spark, which is actually the worst, uh, bulk synchronous processing and data flow. Data flow is somewhat slower than bulk synchronous processing, but not much. And you get a lot of advantages with data flow, which are not always necessary. If you're doing classic parallel clustering, you do not you should use bulk synchronous processing. It's, not, it's clearly the fastest. Um, here is a classic um, big data problem, TerraSort, again implemented. Uh, here we're using Flink. We sometimes use Spark and sometimes use Flink because they're the two sort of high-end uh, implementations in this area. And, uh, uh, and we actually bump synchronous processing <coughs> runs the fastest here, but uh, data flow is pretty near it and it always does better than the the Flink implementations where we show either the basic, this is running on a cluster which has a Intel Platinum nodes. I'm afraid we don't have any Power 9 nodes yet, but maybe we can get that and show that. But you know, running Intel Platinum with InfiniBand interconnects. Um, all right, so that's, and there's, so we, that's why we show IP over InfiniBand. And also these have 10 gigabit um, Ethernet. Uh, here is, uh, so this system is also meant to do streaming. And here's a comparison. Uh, uh, we're working with Martin on some of these things with um, the, uh, Twister's implementation compared to Heron, which is the Twitter's thing. And again, drastic increase in performance. And it's because we're, we are building a library which exploits as much as possible, the underlying hardware. And also with the case of the data flow, we actually use MPI software, which is a better implementation of communication than what Spark and Flink use. Because they, back to those communities don't know about communication. All right, that's that. Um, well, uh, Sean showed a nice data flow graph. So there's some interesting things about data flow. Um, if we go to HPC, you will always use data flow when you use Taverna or, or Kepler or something like that, very high coarse grain size, and data flow has no overheads. However, Spark implements data flow at a finer grain size. And all the slowness of Spark and the fact that it makes RDDs and all those data flow nodes is due to the fact that it applies data flow at a fine grain size as well as a coarse grain size. So Twister 2 will allow you to choose whether you use data flow or whether you use BSP at the data flow nodes, something which Spark does not allow you to do. So this is meant to point out that if you do k-means, if you had k-means in the HPC or classic HPC approach with the data flow with actual different jobs, then that would be standard. But also, say Spark, if you look at the Spark k-means, Code it has a data flow node here after the reduction operation where it uh, is inevitably inefficient. And so, uh, also, we see no reason, as I asked Tony this question about fault tolerance, as far as I can see, Spark has a pretty good fault tolerance model. We just need to allow you to choose not to use it at every data flow node, because again, in MPI, you wouldn't do a better. You wouldn't write your backup checkpoint every iteration. You might you would do a trade-off and write it every 50 iterations or something like that. 
So we will maybe put that in the seam straight forward. So that's it. So what we're trying to do is point out that um, the uh, capabilities you need, which is task management, uh, where again, API is a built-in task management system, which seems to me that we should just replace by, by uh, something like Resource or Yarn. I don't see any reason to keep that. Anyway, we should allow you to, you need to take MPI and split it into two, management and communication. Communication is then that ESP communication I mentioned here. Uh, when we go to SKA and find we need a great joint operation, we will implement a great joint operation. I'm sure you get huge factors of improvement because those are not optimizing the spark system. And also you may not even need to do the drastic things that Spark does at the data flow now, because that's Spark's choice. It is not obviously necessary, because it's all, with every API code I wrote until a few years ago, had never used data flow as a communication step. It just kept these processes running, and they sent messages between each other and did their thing. So, in summary, we have, we've built a set of tools to improve the performance of the Spark, Hadoop, etc., and actually MPI systems. And they have these two features. The HARP system is the actual data analytics, and the Twister 2, which is the overall framework. They're both built as components, so Twister 2 will run the HARP components, HARP subsystem. And uh, I should, we have the first release, which will be the end of June, should have the communication modules and also the data flow modules. Uh, implemented. Then we're going to do uh, some of the more sophisticated things like fault tolerance will be at the end of this year, end of this year. and um, that's Twister 2 and ah, uh, thank you.